Hey guys, welcome to another episode of MSK Coding, and in this episode, I'll be showing you another program I made. This program is for the Yusako 2019 January Bronze Contest, and it's called the Shell Game. For those of you who don't know what Yusako is, it's the United States of America Computing Olympiad, and it's a programming contest that happens in, on the months of December, January, and February. So this is the January contest of 2019, and every problem has a description and a fun little story to go along with it. So let's read it out. To pass the time, Bessie the cow and her friend Elsie like to play a version of the game they saw at the county fair. To start, Bessie puts three inverted shells on a table and places a small round pebble under one of them. At least she hopes it's a pebble. She found it on the ground in one of the pastures. Bessie then proceeds to swap pairs of shells while Elsie tries to guess the location of the pebble. The standard version of the game the, co the cows saw being played at the county fair allowed the player to see the initial location of the pebble and then required guessing its final location after all the swaps were complete. However, the cows like to play a version where Elsie does not know the initial location of the pebble and where she can guess the pebble location after every swap. Bessie, knowing the right answer, gives Elsie a score at the end equal to the number of correct guesses she made. Given the swaps and the guesses, but not the initial pebble location, please determine the highest possible score Elsie could have earned. So right off the bat, you can see that there's a lot of filler, like with the cows, but the main three points, or main, maybe not three, but there are two main points, and those are that Elsie does not know the initial location of the pebble, that um, two shells are being swapped every turn, that Elsie gets a guess after every swap, and that we are supposed to find out the max amount of points Elsie could have gotten, the maximum amount of correct guesses. So let's look at the input format. The first line of the input file contains an integer n, giving the number of swaps between 1 and 100. Each of the next n lines describes the step of the game and contains three integers, a, b, and g, saying that a and b were swapped and that g was guessed. All three of these integers are either one, two, or three, like first shell, second shell, third shell, and a is not b, because you can't really swap a shell with itself. I need to output the maximum amount of points LZ could have earned. So here's our sample. It says that there are three swaps and three guesses. That the first swap was between the first and second shell. Elsie guessed the first shell had the pebble under it. Second swap was between the third and second shell. Elsie again thought that the first shell had the pebble under it. And then finally the first and third shells were swapped. And Elsie also thought that the first shell had the pebble under it which is actually impossible. I don't think it'll be possible to have number the first shell to always have the pebble. But, you know, LZ just randomly guessed, I guess. So we can read why the output is two, because LZ could have earned at least two points, or at most two points. If the pebble started under shell one, then she guesses right exactly once in her final guess, because the first shell now becomes the second shell, and Elsie gets the first one, which is not actually the first shell that was at the beginning. Then the pebble gets moved to the third shell. And then finally, the pebble gets moved back to the first shell, which is the one that's being guessed. And so if the pebble started under shell two, then it got moved to shell one. Yay! Was guessed correctly. It didn't change in the second swap, so Elsie also got it correct. So that's two points, but then it gets moved to the third shell, so Elsie doesn't get a point this time. And if it starts under shell three, she doesn't make any correct guesses. Now, let's go to my code. So we start off in import sys, which imports the system module. But before I go further, I just want to say that this ID that I'm using is not REPL, nor it is Visual Studio Code. It's the ID... Um, given by the Yusako Guide, which is a website that I really like, and it 
it's mostly to help prepare for the Yusako contests I'm planning to take in December of this year. And it's not affiliated with the Yusako, like the actual contests, as far as I am aware. And the Yusako Guide is open source, and it's just a really fun um, website to look around and solve problems and just learn some more things. Now let's get into the program. So first of all, we need to set input and print, you know, basic Python functions to take from the shell in and shell out files. Okay, so if I move this window closer, you can see that the IO input output is from these files, shell in, shell out. So I set stdin standard input, which is input function really. And he said that to reading the shell.in file, and then we set standard output, oh, oh no, which is the Python print function to write in the shell.out file. So I, th I hope that makes enough sense. So as you saw in the example here, the first line contains the integer n giving the number of swaps. So here I have a swap num. Then I set cases. So cases is a list that says, it's like the amount of points LZ would have gotten, the amount of correct guesses, if the pebble was under a shell at the beginning. So this first um, element says that if the pebble was under the first shell at the beginning, this element says the amount of points or correct guesses that LZ has. Second element is if the pebble was under shell two at the beginning and shell three at the beginning for the third element. Then we have shell order, which is a list full of zero, one, two, which are like indices. And we swap the elements in shell order around to signify where the original shells are after a bunch of swaps. So when you swap, let's say the first and second shell, it becomes one, zero, two instead of zero, one, two. And that's to show that the first shell now was actually the second shell at the beginning. And the second shell now was actually the first shell at the beginning. And the numbers are seem a bit off, like the first shell is zero and the second shell is one. Well, that's because that's how most programming languages index their arrays lists. So indexing of zero is the first element, index of one is the second element. I hope that makes sense. Here we have swap one, swap two guess equals map int input dot split. So we'll start at the beginning. Input is just the next line. So if we go back to the Yusako page, it's these three lines, depending on um, where we are in the for loop. So it's either one, two, one, three, two, one, one, three, one. So the first iteration, we have swap one is the number one, swap two is the number two, and guess is the number one. And the way that you can get it is you split it. So now instead of one string with space separated values, now it's actually three strings. And then we map the integer function onto it. So now instead of three strings, there are three integers. And then like I said before, we subtract one from each of them. We subtract one from each of them to fit with zero indexing. And then we swap the shells. And so what this is basically saying is shell order. Let's say we have zero and one elements that we're swapping. You're saying zero is now one and one is now zero. So swap one is now swap two and swap two is now swap one and i hope that makes sense and now we get to the most complicated line of the entire program in my opinion which is cases of shell order of guess plus equals one so before we really dive into what this line represents, let's see what's happening to our data as this program has just been going on. So we've already um, defined shell order and cases as these lists. And so then when we do our swapping, so 
we get zero one two as the beginning then we have to swap the first and second elements as in you can see right here sample input swap one two then you swap the third and second elements then you swap the first and third elements so that's what we're doing right here so we take one zero now those are swapped then in the second um, swap we swap these two elements then finally we swap these two elements the first and third and each of these times LZ is guessing the first element or the index zero element and so what we do is we index we take the index zero of this list which is one at the first swap so that means that if the pebble was under shell index one at the beginning LZ would have guessed correctly because that's now the shell that has the pebble under it so we give one point to cases that's what this line is at the end and we put it at index one or the element representing amount of points if the shell index one had the pebble under it at the beginning then again the guess of zero or the first element is still of one or the shell index one at the beginning the second shell and so again if the pebble was under shell index one at the beginning Elsie would get a new another point so we add one to the index one element of cases then finally when we swap the one and zero around the first and third elements and LZ guesses index zero. Now we can see that if the pebble was under shell index zero at the beginning, LZ would be correct. And so we add one point to the zero index of cases. And um, the index two or the third shell at the beginning was never guessed at all. So that's why it has zero points. So that's basically what this line does. It takes guess, which is, you know, this, the zero, 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 and it takes shell order of guess. So in this case, it takes the first element of all of them, all of the shell orders, and that increases the cases of that so it's cases of index one you add one cases of index one you add one again cases of index zero you add one so that's just what that line does and then this last line print max cases that just figures out the maximum amount of points that else you could have gotten which in this case it's two and it outputs that so to check our answers um, the USACO guide ID has this nice submit feature, which just tests my program against a bunch of test cases. And then so when we run it, we can see that I'm getting correct answers. And so how the testing works is the back end of the submit button has a, a list of inputs, possible inputs, and the correct outputs that should be given and then it puts my program against each of the inputs and it tests each of my outputs against the correct outputs and it gives a green if they matched and then it gets an x if it didn't match in this case there was no x meaning that my program executed successfully well anyways that's it for this episode of msk coding and i hope to see you in the next one bye